Hey guys and welcome to a mod review slash spotlight on the Matthew Ferguson 300 by Peter J. So I'm going to extend a huge thank you for Peter J, well to Peter J for allowing me to do this. And it's it means the world, it really does, when stuff like this happens. And I get quality stuff like this to bring to you guys. So, what are we looking at here? We are looking at the, if you like, famous... 300 series, we've known about this for several, several months and possibly years since NI Modern first showed it. I believe Peter J took it over from NI Modern and uh, he took over from the greats. NI Modern were fantastic. Uh, definitely a team that we will all miss and uh, it's a shame not to have them in Farmsim anymore, but understandably why. So we'll go through them. I will show you them in the shop and we'll just quickly do a little pan around them so what you see here is what you get in the pack some beautiful beautiful detailed models as you can see we've got them floodlit and I'm not gonna lie this is my second time recording this video I goofed 28 minutes down the drain Wahey! alrighty so let's open it up in the shop to begin with so we'll go over to Brands, we'll go and find Massey Ferguson, and we'll scroll right to the end. So, to begin with, we have the 362 to the 36382, I did make that mistake last time too. Peaks out at 150 horsepower, costs 34,000. They all do the same speed, so I'm not going to go over the speed and the fuel, well... Give or take, it's going to vary. 62 horsepower even. <laughs> I must have been on a different one. And then we have the 365 to the 390T, T standard for turbo. Peaks out at uh, 65 horse. There, um, that is 35,300. Then we have the 3898 to the 399. That is... 93 horsepower costs 48,000 flat. Then we have the 8 juice, the 383 WRC, not Worldwide Rally Championship. I um, believe it stands for Wide Row Crop. You'll see in a minute. And then we of course we have the 399 Turbo which is the most powerful tractor out of the pack. That's 124 horsepower. Uh, that's 41k the WRC, and the 399 turbo is 66,200. Then we have the front loaders. You got the 310, 4,000. And then we've got the the 810 for 4,000. Then we've got the 880 for 4,600. Then we have the 893 for 5,200. So you can see the tractors they connect up to. I believe pretty much these two are the same hookups, so they can swap between the two, I think. Don't quote me on this one. This one seems to be only the 399 from what I have seen. And then we have the front weight, uh, suitcase weights, and then the block weight. So the suitcases are 600, and the weight box is 850. I'm not sure how much that weighs, the weight box doesn't actually say neither of them so you'd have to put them on the way bridge and find out all right let's back out of this and take a good look around the tractors so we'll start off with the weights uh, this is them on the ground you can definitely see the model in there so you can add them all together in this theory in theory should be the weight so you can see the uh, 27 kilo a piece and the Massey logo and the block weight here Pretty cool. You could either use it for a uh, rear attractor for the front loaders, or some of the tractors have uh, three point hitches up front. So here's the front loaders. Here's the 810. You probably recognize this one from the 240 pack. I think it's the same one. Don't quote me on that. Then we've got the 880, which seems a little bit bigger if you look. Then we have more of a traditional looking front loader from what we know now. Anyway, um, 883, 
and like I say, that can connect up to this. So you, I try to get a different range of configs going here. So we'll start off that down this end. This is the 390T four-wheel drive with the Highline cab. And something to note is just the detail on all of these models. And fuel separator, I think that's a fuel separator anyway, at least. You can see the fuel injection pump, or it looks to be the fuel injection pump anyway. But the, the decals, you can read them when you zoom in and stuff like that. And you, know, you can see the various different bolts, the all the detail on the rear ends. And this is something Peter J wanted me to kind of show off, is the amount of detail that's actually gone into these. And the pin there to lock that in. Anybody knows that it's got those things stuck on your thumb. Good grief, they hurt. Like a mousetrap going off in your fingers, thumbs, whatever. Uh, of course, we've got Peter J number plate up top. It's something to note that I didn't actually show off when I first recorded the different hitches. Uh, so you can see the different types of arms. Once you get into the heavier classification of tractors, they change up. And they get bigger. So these arms here are different from the arms on this one, if you look. So he's modelled a lot of parts individually, which is awesome. So what we'll do is we'll start up the 390, take it for a quick spin. Definitely got custom engine sounds on these. To me anyway, they've definitely got custom engine sounds. So we'll just go backwards. Forwards. Awesome. Now, these should be releasing any day now on Giant's Mod Hub by the sounds of it. He has given me the all clear to do a video on it and show it off. So we'll park this here. This has got the front loader for the smaller uh, front loaders, as I just said, uh, for the 880. And front guard, none of that. And then you can go for the different engine configs, standard wheels, wheels with front fenders. Narrow tires, which I'll show you guys now. I'm only going to really run through these the once on this tractor, more than likely. Custom rims. Awesome to see custom rims on... Pr well, it is. It's custom rims on every single tire and rim option. Fair play to you on that one. Because you see a lot of people get lazy and they just don't do that. Uh, we'll go customize again. Narrow tires with fenders. Wide tires. Just show them off quick. So obviously, they're just slightly wider, to be expected. Again, custom rims, and wide tires with fenders, rear twins, again, using the custom rims, and it looks like their uh, bracketry is correct for that. I'm gu guessing the holes in the rims are for wheel weights, I'm surprised they're not an option, actually. Uh, rear, win rear wheels with fenders, and twin wheels all round. Which I'll show you. Because, like I said, I'm only going to show this off the once, really. There we go. No, customize. And twin with fenders, row tires, which we've got already got on tractor, but we'll just show you. There. Again, on custom rims, so this is Nokians from uh, the Vulture that we've got. See a lot of people using them now. Very nice to see them in on these. And with fenders. And two-wheel drive, which will uh, just drop it into two-wheel drive. Uh, one negative that I have got about the two-wheel drive tractors, it seems like in some conditions the tyres do have a shine to them. Uh, that being said, he may have fixed it. Not 100%. Sometimes they do look a little bit shiny depending on the lighting conditions, it will be said. as one thing I have brought to his attention. Uh, along with the 399T, the white tyres don't have a fender option. That's just personal preference on that one. Uh, two-wheel drive, two-wheel drive narrow, so we'll show you that one. Just a narrow rear tires to be expected on that one because the front end's already narrow. And then standard, uh, which is what we had it in. So we'll, oh, yep, we'll do that. And then I need to show you guys the cabs option on this. So we've got the high line, which is default. Uh, footstep, which is basically without a cab, no nothing. 
like that, and you've got the uh, robber uh, beacon goes up top. Things to be to take note on cabbed and cabless tractors. You'll see the seats change. Uh, you've gone for more of a sort of plasticky, vinyl, rubbery, whatever coating this is for outdoor use, basically. And I think the foot plates and stuff like that, that all changes up by the looks of it. Again, to be expected. Unless I should jump on the cab so you guys can see, clearly. I take note of how that all looks. And again, the detail in the cab. Or the operating station, if you like. See the PTO selector and... Speeds, your draft control for the three point, your spools, obviously your uh, manual gearbox there. Okay, customize, and then we'll go to low profile. Cab, like that, jump into that. Seats changed, around the cab's changed, or so obviously enclosed the way the gauges are and such like. Buttons, all of that good stuff. Now you may be asking, does the tractors have IC? This is where I become very unsure on what's going on. Um, PDJ did send me a extra file to put in my mods folder, which makes these tractors have IC and injects various of his different scripts into them, which I will probably show right at the end. I don't know how he's going to do that up on the mod hub. So we're back to the uh, highly my cap. A profile, whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Alright, we'll... Put that there. Oh, actually, we need to move that forward. Shut that down. Okay, now we're going over to the WRC, the 383. So, obviously what's unique with this? Really, really wide. Really intriguing looking rims. So we'll jump in this. Notice the different engine sounds as we start working through the track, as I will say that. I use an Xbox controller most of the time, but if you left click, you'll see you've got a track thing come up, and you can, and as I move to the controller to do this, adjust the working width of the uh, machine on the fly. Which obviously you wouldn't be able to do in real life, uh, because these are bolted, the front axle is bolted usually, but you'll be able to somewhat adjust it. So it looks pretty cool, going forward. Actually gives a really interesting illusion as the hubs aren't moving. But it's pretty neat, you can adjust that. Uh, for the most part it's just the standard tracks of this one, uh, for potatoes and stuff like that I can presume. Now the options on it, actually we'll show you all the working lights and all that good stuff. Um, indicators. There you go. Don't think. Yeah, you can see because of the scripting, the hazard switch is working, which is neat. Same with the button there, you can see it moving maybe. I would like to see illuminated dashboard, that'd be kind of neat. That's one thing I never realised could be an added feature you put on there. Uh, okay, footstep, then we have ROPS and the canopy, so we'll look at that. So this is probably more for your South American sugarcane harvest scenario, so if you're into that map, then, uh, well, you've got yourself a good tractor for that map for sure. And then Highline Cab, which, yeah, looks funny. <laughs> it just looks hilarious with that whole gap. And I believe that just goes back to the footstep. And front loader attachment and front guard and all that good stuff, which, yeah, I don't know if you would really be... If you were using a red crop tractor like this, would you have a front loader on there? I don't know. Obviously no wheel options because it is a specialised tractor. Oh. Thank you, course play. I believe I have got my traffic switched off too. I don't know why, but I've been having issues with course play lately. Yep, traffic off. I'm going to have to restart the, the recording and the game, so we shall be back. Alrighty, we're back. Hopefully, Corseplay doesn't screw us up again, as we've disabled it. So, the 383 with the uh, the wide row crops. Weird looking tractor, not going to lie, but an interesting one for that. Just the, the detail on the rims and the way they move. Pretty neat. Pretty neat indeed. Okay, so now we're moving on to the 383. 
Not to get confused with the 698. Awesome looking forestry cage on it, on the one that we've chosen to put on here. I like the fact that it's just matte black. Some people put gloss on and stuff like that, so Peter J has spent the time and done the research there. Mountain bracketry down the, low. Even the sort of bracketry there, it left in the model for front loaders and stuff like that. You can see the oil filter. And then the cage coming down to the top of the axle there, where it would be effectively coming down. Uh, where's a good comparison? I don't know, just where the ropes are there. I don't think we can really show you. Oh, yeah, again, just over there. See where the cab mounts it on that one. So we'll jump into this. Notice the engine difference, like I was talking about. Again, shut down, go to this one. And then instantly back to this one. Different engine time. So we'll back this up. And go into the Confix. And show you all about that. So you can go front loader, front guard, and front loader plus guard. No. This is a 399 at 104 horsepower. Uh, the 190 for the 98 and the 9904. Two wheel drive, standard, so all these wheels you would have seen already. Uh, front wheel was standard. P A V T rim. I don't know what they are, I will quickly show you those. Uh, they are basically, turns it into a four wheel drive, uh, but it's all the same rim as over here. Pretty much just looks like it's not inverted. Yeah, it's basically been flipped around so it's not as wide. If you notice there, what part's been mounted. But, other than it looking different, you can't actually operate it. You can't do anything with it. So we'll open up the F1, and you guys can see, can't do anything. So I'm not really sure what that rim stands for at all. I need to do a bit of research on that one. So we're still with the forestry cage on. Now, something I'm curious about. Uh, you cannot change the cab on this one. So you could go uh, the, that rim set up with uh, fenders, wide tyres, twin tyres, twin tyres with fenders, row tyres again, which for forestry is probably what I'd use, I think, maybe. Uh, row tyres with fenders, two wheel drive. So we had the two wheel drive. Uh, and you can go forestry or standard. I'll quickly just show you the standard. Basically, it's the same as. Normal, just without the forestry cage. And we'll put that back on. And that's that tractor in a nutshell. Not much to that one. So we'll spin around. And of course, in driving around, you guys can hear the engine. Uh, must be said, proper cr tire tracks. Uh, the closest thing to the three bar front tires. And then the rear tractor tire up front. So to notice for the next one, we are about to show you. Alright, shut that down and jump into the first tractor that you guys have seen, really, with a three-point hitch. So this is the 362 with the knock-ins on. And you can see a bit of dirt on them. Uh, obviously, I've had to re-record this, but I have used these tractors in a field here, in field... 34, you can actually see the yellow dot of the plow still up there where we had the 399P on. Again, a different engine sound yet. So as we back up and head into that tractor, you can already see we have different tyre marks. So we'll do this so you guys can clearly see them. So these are kind of ones off of a trailer tyre mimicking the Nokians. And... So another detail to notice that I actually almost missed last time around. On the hood bonnet of the vehicles, you've got 12 12, 12 forward, 12 backwards. Over here, you've got 18 speed shift, and 18 speed shift there, 12 12 there, 12 12 there. There's a front loader. <laughs> uh, so, some small details to notice on that. And I know for a fact there's probably going to be details that I miss. 
Peter J, I'm sorry. I know you tr wanted to, to me to definitely try and show off all the details I've spotted. Um, another thing to note, actually, the front steering knuckles. You can see them turning. You can see the universal joints up front. So we'll park this, and we'll go over the options of this model. So you got front linkage, standard, and front link, oh, front linkage again. This is kitted up for the 310 front loader, or nothing. Engine setup, currently we've got the 362, which is 62 horsepower. The 72, which is 71 horsepower. The, and back to the 82. So the three engine choices there. Road tires, we've already got on road tires with fenders, standard. Front wheel with fenders, narrow tires, narrow tires, fender, twin rear, uh, twin yeah, twin rear twin tires, or wheels, and the fenders again, full setup, full setup, uh, full twins with fenders again. Uh, footstep option, footstep with ROPS, which I will show you quickly. You'll recognise it very quick. It's that sort of setup. Probably very typical to what you see in the UK more than anything, I'd imagine. And low profile cab and back to footstep. Uh, just for people wanting to see what it looks like, I'll show you again. There you go. And that's pretty much the, this one in a nutshell. Uh, yeah, we had on footstep with the front linkage. Now. We will fire it up. I've not done anything like this yet, so I'm going to try it and give it a go. I've never actually lifted anything on the through point on the front before. I want to see how that looks. So also you can see with the little uh, mod that Peter J sent me with all the scripts. Park and brake will come up. Shuttle will go down. Clutch will go in. Brakes. So on and so forth on that. Again, I don't know what he's doing about that. Peter J, if you're watching this, I'll let people know on that one. You can see the front linkage working there. No, I was ready to show that, just the uh, working front linkage, I guess. So we'll drop the weight there. Off, and we will reverse straight on back. And something I will show uh, right now is the front weights on a tractor, because I thought I had them on the tractor, but I guess I took them off. Uh, so we will just throw them on this one quickly. A bit all over the place this video. Uh, definitely the other one was better structured. There you go. Uh, this is what the weights look like on a actual machine. So if you guys wanted to do the math, you could probably figure out how much weight's up front. But it's pretty neat. They're definitely all individual, you can see. Each or the light coming for each individual one, and I like the fact that it's puts it in a nice little box. That being said, I don't think you can move that box around, but it doesn't matter. All right, the tractor that I think a lot of people are after, the three nine nine. So as you see, it's got all the doors on right now with a front loader so we'll take that off or the uh, doors off at least customize you can't do anything to the engine this is literally just a 399 turbo uh, front loader on and off twins with fenders uh, road tires road tires with fender standard we'll put the standards on uh, single beacon or dual beacon and of course up front uh, three point or no three point so that's it's looking pretty much bog standard and so I realized I haven't gone over the front loaders yet really and we will check them out now along with the IC and all of that in this now something to note as well we have got the linkage up front so we've got a uh, lever for or lever for the front loader Again, something that I almost just missed. Just like that, it's gone. Do we have that on the rest of them? Uh, not that I can see there, unless that's what that... Nah, that's the gear stick. It's got to be the gear stick. But that's got the lever there. 
And what other tractor do we have that kid out on? Yeah, that's got to be the gear shift. It's got to be. So it looks like it's just the 399 that has that. That we almost missed. Alright, let's put the three point back on it. The three point, the front loader back on it. And we'll back into that. Which, just like all of them, and the other two are very much like the ones that are in the 240 pack. I will quickly show you guys them there as well. But this one has more of a traditional nowadays block style connector. So you can see that all connected up. Here the engine RPMs go up when we're operating this. You actually see them on the taco drop, the gauge on the left. Pretty neat, pretty neat indeed. Alright, we'll drop that. And then I'll show you guys the IC. Again, uh, I can't explain this enough. Is there a shadow on the other side? Oh, that's neat. Look at the green hair icon. That disappears. So because we're going slow, that's engaged. And then when we go faster, it'll flip over. Oh, that's a bug. So, that is a bug I've just noticed. It's actually moving up onto the top of the screen. I thought it was switching on and off. Oh, that's a shame. That will be because, for whatever reason, it is on... the... shuttle control, I think. Okay, so, what was I going to show you? The IC. Don't know how he's going to do this, but you've got door opening, so I'll show you that quick. Windows. It was actually open. I didn't even notice that myself. Uh, the window was open. Rear window, which is really cool, uh, the way that folds. So you've got the bottom glass piece first, and then that. I think if it, if you could do it in real life, which I presume you can, it'd be pretty cool if it was like the TW, where you could latch that up separate and then open the main window. I just know what people are liking. The option, side door here, window here, you've already seen it on the other side, so I won't show that. And sunroof. And windscreen wiper. I'm not sure, like I say, where he is going to put that up. I can't emphasize that enough because I truly have no idea. And let's park in front of the leaper here, something I do want to show you guys. Now this is the detail that runs underneath the, the well, these models in general. That didn't work, that was too aggressive there. I do. Actually, can we lay it on its side? Alright, that'll do. <laughs> so, the detail underneath them, even. You see the drive shaft running up to the front. If we get up here a little bit level, you can see the fill and plug. Just in the center of the screen there. The pin for the front. Just the detail even underneath the machine. Places that people aren't going to see. Uh, the steering ram right there. The, the drawbar. Again, all the detail on the back side of stuff that people probably aren't going to see. It's amazing. It really is. Alright, let's see if I can drop this one down. Because I do want to show the... two-wheel drive variant because just to show it's the same model basically which probably is something they did in real life I am not sure I don't need to go as extreme on that one just need to be able to crawl down here and just there where the drive shaft's missing 
It could have been a uh, workaround for these models, but I doubt it. It's probably legit. Probably really is legit. And something like that, you could run a PT up to the front maybe. I don't know. No idea. But I just thought I'd show you all the detail underneath the machines as well. And hopefully I've done these justice. I uh, hope so anyway, because they are just absolutely quality, quality models. They really are. So I will briefly show you hooking up to one of the loaders here. I'll just grab this tractor. I don't even know what this one's supposed to have on it. I'm going to try hooking up to both of them, see if it will go to both. Like I say, this is anyone that's used the Massey Ferguson 240s. This is pretty much the same. Uh, loaders just in various different sizes. So, yep, that's going to work. Standard loader there. And nothing ready to report on. And drop that. See landing legs come down for them, which is pretty cool. And we'll scooch into this one. And another thing to note when you are running a three point hitch, the, draw, the uh, linkages for the front disappears, which is awesome. Really, really neat. So, that is the 300 series Massey Ferguson's. Hopefully they're going to be out this week, uh, presumably this week. I'm recording this on the 4th of March 2018, so I'm thinking the fact we didn't see anything up on the mod hub today, as you guys are seeing this video, probably towards the back end of the week. It's been fairly quiet because of the Easter Monday and all that stuff. But definitely something to look forward to. I will be showing these and using these in my live stream tonight at 7pm. Uh, trying out the updated version of the Straw Harvest if anyone is interested. So, hopefully you guys are there, and let me know. Um, Peter J, hopefully I did you proud on covering as much detail as uh, possible. If I missed stuff, I apologise. If you've got any info about any of these, especially the IC stuff, uh, please put it in the comments down below, and I will pin your comment to the top. I will also, obviously, shoot you a message to let you know all of that stuff. So until next time, guys, hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and expect these really soon. Trust me, they're worth the wait. They are very, very nice tractors, indeed. Catch you guys later. See ya.